Hello everyone, my name is Johan Stein. Welcome to the Chatbot Africa and Conversational Artificial Intelligence Summit. What I want to talk about in this keynote, and I only have 20 minutes, is conversational artificial intelligence unlocking the future of Africa. And I want to ask you to join me for these few minutes and let's just dream a bit. Yes, we need to look at the practical applications of implementing and using this technology and I will touch on that during this short talk. But think of the potential. Think of the potential for your business in Africa. Think of the millions of, in particularly, millennial people who are used to and who is hungry for this kind of technology. But also think about the good that we can do for our societies. Now Gartner, a while back, said that 85% of consumers globally are handling their interactions with their service providers through technology that does not involve human interaction. So the current generation of young people are getting more and more used to the ease, the efficiency, the speed and the accuracy of dealing with technology for whatever they want. They are getting used to instant answers, relevant answers to questions they have. Now this could be questions around healthcare, this could be questions around the COVID epidemic, but it is also questions around their financial future. Um, in an era of fake news, and in an era where we can get so-called news from so many sources, that's not always trustworthy. We really have a moral imperative to have platforms available for our young people that gives them the right kind of advice, and the right kind of information. Gardner also says that about 60% of millennials globally use chatbots or conversational AI, and about 70% of them report positive experiences. The question for us as business people, or as people who work in communities, is do we have the kind of technology that, or the kind of platform really, and the kind of strategy that can put our products and services into the hands of these young people? And does it give them accurate news or accurate descriptions of the products and services? And does it kick off the right kind of processes? So let me just briefly talk about the word chatbot. The same as robotic process automation. I think as technologists, we know what it means. But when most people think about a bot or a robot, they think about what they've seen in Hollywood movies, and they normally have a negative association with it. And I'm very glad that these days we are speaking more about conversational AI than we are about chatbots. Now, what is the difference? And many of you on this uh, seminar will most likely know the answer. But in the past, we would have chatbots. You know, when you visit a website, there's a little screen that pops up um, at the bottom. Sometimes the, the X is a bit hidden because I don't necessarily want to see this thing popping up the whole time. I want to close it down. But it's not always intelligent. It doesn't always give me the answers that I need. Uh, a while back, I was speaking to a service provider that I deal with. And even though I'm a current client, even though I'm already logged into the platform, when the chatbot wanted to answer my query, I had to fill in my name and surname and email address again which was a frustration because I'm logged in, you should already know it. And the bot should already know what I'm most likely going to ask. But I had such a frustrating interaction with this chatbot. It wasn't intelligent, it wasn't customized for my specific profile. And I've been with this service provider for some years now. They have a lot of data on me. So they haven't created a persona for me or people like me. They don't know and cannot anticipate what I will most likely ask them. And not only from a problem solving or a queries point of view, but also from an um, analytics and a predictive analytics point of view. Even though I'm going into the platform to resolve an issue with my billing, it is a fantastic opportunity not only to give me great customer experience, to make me feel really good about the experience, but also in a subtle way, propose new products and solutions to me 
relevant to my profile, not a solution or a product that is so stupid, I don't even know why they ask me, they should know better, but they should give me something that I really would enjoy and really would use based on my previous interactions from an omni-channel point of view. And that's also a challenge we have. A lot of our bigger organizations, like some of the big banks, uh, insurance companies, even some of our telcos, have such federated divisions and federated data sets on us. They're not always talking to one another. So one of the things I want to land with this conversation is don't always think only of the technology and the platform, but think about how you are going to use it. Think about how it's this kind of chatbot or conversational AI technology can service your customers across the various platforms, across all the various channels. So as a, as a bank, you might have your client data from a home loan point of view. You might have your client data separately from a credit card point of view, from an investment point of view. And I know a lot of banks have been trying to get this right. Some have. But when I speak to a conversational AI agent, it needs to have sight of all my data. And it needs to come up proactively with solutions to my issues or to my anticipated issues and questions based on all my data. So the chatbot platform is very important, but the way we implement it, the way we use it, the change management in our own organization, and as I said, very importantly, our data sets is an important part of this. So if we want to make a change in Africa, whether it is through commerce or whether it is through doing good, maybe as a charity, then we have to make sure that even though our intentions are really good, that we give a superior experience to the people that use this kind of technology. So remember, we have to move from chatbots that's often somewhat dumb, somewhat reactive. To some extent, it is just a glorified questions and answers or a frequently questions and answers page. I could have Googled it. It most likely would have been easier for me to just go to the Q&A or the FQA page and find my query. But sometimes we don't really know what is the question. We know what is the problem that we want to solve, but we don't know how to explain it. So that's the problem with the FQA page. It might be divided in certain themes, and now I need to drill down, drill down, drill down, and eventually I kind of give up and I'd rather just call the call center, who will most likely have to do the same. It doesn't solve my problem. The conversational AI based on machine learning and pattern recognition and related technologies should be able to interpret my question based on the data not only of myself but of people like me and other customers. There's most likely an 80% ratio of the frequently asked questions. So it should be easy to train the models to anticipate that questions. So when I join a new bank, I might ask some things like, where is my closest branch? When can I expect the arrival of my debit or credit cards? Who do I call when I want to apply or where do I go when I want to apply for a home loan? So all those almost onboarding questions and answers should be there. And of course, the AI learns from its interactions. And it should, every time we ask the same questions, give us a better and a more accurate and a quicker answer. And then it will also pick up questions from customers that's never been asked before. And then it can flag that content. And that can maybe change the way we market our services to our customers. Uh, there might be a, a, a portion of what our customers experience when we onboard them that we've forgotten to put into the journey. Um, so now we put it in. And that brings me to the other thing, and again related to data. There's so much we can learn from the data we harvest when we deal with our customers in this kind of technology. It will not only help us on the one hand, to better solve their problems because we can see how the platform is being used. We can see the typical issues that clients struggle with. But it can also help us develop and upsell new services. Because we can see, for instance, that again, let me use a bank as an example. A lot of our clients are asking about a certain kind of product. We might not offer that product to them yet. But based on the data, it is easier to develop that business case. Yes, you can't be all thing to all people. But if you see that 80% of your clients are asking the conversational AI 
for a specific kind of product or for an improvement on a specific offering or product, then there's, it's easier to develop that business case based on the data that you've got. So remember, the business case should come first. I, won't, I don't say forget about the technology and the platform, but ask yourself before you get jump into all this exciting technology, what is the problem we're solving for? Now, again, as a bank, you might say that a lot of the clients who use our digital platforms end up going to the branch in any case. And the reason for that is that they don't get what they want and what they need from the digital platform. So now you need to start looking at the business case. So before you just put a chatbot in there, is can you improve the actual platform, the digital platform that the client is using? It could be a process problem, which no chatbot and no AI would necessarily be able to fix. So always step back from a primarily technological conversation and look at your business case and look at what you need to solve for. Then you look at the technology and the platform. And then you have to ask questions like, do we have the skills in-house to develop and manage this platform? Do we need to partner with a specific vendor and platform to help us leapfrog ahead in the development and the use of this kind of technology? Never forget to take your own people on the journey. Whenever we start talking about bots, chatbots, robotics, and so forth, people naturally fear for their own jobs. And, the, and we should not, and again, that's why I say don't lead with technology. Lead with business and lead then with people. Make sure that you get your people excited about this technology. Make sure that your people can see the benefits to their day-to-day -day jobs. Because if we do this right, we should alleviate a lot of the back office repetitive stuff. I mean, imagine you're a call center agent and you have to accept or make two or three hundred calls a day. And almost all the calls are about exactly the same five or six questions. What a mind-numbing, boring job that must be. But now imagine, by the time you take the client call, there is already some interaction. So for instance, the first few questions and answers would have been by an intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence chatbot or conversational intelligence. So that by the time that call comes onto your screen, you already know what they're asking and you already have the question. So suddenly your job changed from a, just a back office repetitive administrative kind of a role to more of an advisory role. Because now you can take the data that you have and give your client answers to their questions. That must be so much more fulfilling than just asking or answering the same questions over and over again. And then I want to touch on before I end off the AI for good conversation. Just imagine how this technology can help people, especially young people. Think, for instance, about university students from a mental health point of view, from a sexual health point of view, from a financial health point of view. How can we deliver the right kind of advice and services to our students, to our consumers who are in Africa, predominantly millennials these days, and that um, demographic is growing rapidly as people enter the, or try to enter the workforce. We can do good. We can help people make the, li the right life decisions. We can help people understand their own health problems or their own financial problems. Imagine how much good we can do for society if we do this right. So I want to ask you to join us on this journey. Um, at this conference, you're going to hear from some amazing people who work in the field and who can tell you about their own struggles and issues. It's not just about information, these conferences, because we can kind of Google it and find it anywhere. The benefit of these kind of conferences is, on the one hand, networking with people. And I want to encourage you, if you enjoyed the talk of one of the speakers, all of the speakers are on the speakers page with their LinkedIn or Twitter profiles, reach out to them, connect with them, ask questions, give them recommendations, because we only know that much. There might be some very, very obvious things that we talk about that we've missed. So please reach out to all of the speakers uh, that you want to reach out to, connect with them. But then also use this technology and think about, think creatively and out of the box. How you can take this technology on a journey. Remember, like I said, the business case. Take your own people on a journey from a change management point of view from a data readiness point of view, and start small and get some cadence. Don't try and change your whole business. Start small. 
win over your own people, win over your own customers. And many of the people who are speaking at this conference uh, can help you with that journey. So thank you for joining. I'm excited to hear what all the other speakers are going to speak about. And I'm excited to virtually meet with you and network with you. And again, thank you to Sydney and for his team for arranging this very timeless and very relevant event.